Christianity is extraordinarily lost, as is the identity of the American, because we forget that this country was started by religious zealots, right? Dude on the Quaker box, Puritans, these kinds <laughs> of folks. So we're very lost from an identity standpoint. Christianity is lost as well. Whose calendar are we on? We're on the Catholic Church's calendar. English language is credited to a Catholic monk, Burford, the Ramsey Abbey. Scripted rituals paying tribute to history. Scripted rituals undermining our rights and liberties. Undermining the true intention of what this nation was supposed to be about. Freedom, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Washington, D.C. October 13th, 1792. For the stone. A group of Freemasons perform a sacred ceremony in which they lay the first stone used in the construction of the White House. The large stone is intended to be the foundation of the southeast corner of the building and is referred to as the cornerstone. When the White House cornerstone was dedicated, there was corn, wine, and oil poured on top of it. It's the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, and the oil of joy. And that really expresses the hopes of the Masons involved for the success of not only that building, but what it represents, the system of government, and by extension, the nation. Tucked away in the archives of Georgetown University is a unique five-page manuscript from the 1600s. It's the only known writing in an extinct language used by Native Americans along the Atlantic coast. Scholars have identified the author as Andrew White, a Jesuit priest. The manuscript contains four prayers, the Ten Commandments, and some of the basic Catholic teachings known as the precepts. When we think of migration from England to North America in the 1600s, we usually think of Protestant groups like the Puritans. But the same century also saw the arrival of many Catholics. In the early 1630s, an English aristocrat and Catholic convert named George Calvert was seeking a charter to colonize land along the North American coast. In 1632, the charter was granted, and a select group of 200 Catholics and Protestants crossed the ocean and took up residence in what would become Maryland. The Catholic colonists, including Father White, were seeking to better their lives in the new colony and escape from religious persecution in England. While they built farms and settlements, many of the colonists also wanted to spread Christianity among Native American tribes. As part of that effort, Father White translated the Ten Commandments and other material into the Native American language. White was one of the first to create a grammar book and dictionary of a Native American language. Father White's work illustrates how the desire to spread the Bible advanced the development of written languages around the globe. Jesu, G-E-S-U, with a G. Jesu, by the way, is Jesus in Italian. Let me read to you from Rulers of Evil by author F. Tupper Saucy. Hold Freemasonry up to the light, and you cannot help but see the Black Papacy's watermark. Isn't it reasonable, given the circumstances, that the G in the center of the familiar Masonic emblem represents the initial of Jesu, the residence of the Black Popes, at the Jesuits' world headquarters in Rome? Freemasons wouldn't suspect this, nor would Jesuits. It would be information reserved uniquely to the unknown superior, who shares what he knows with no one. Quote, your enemies will serve you without their wishes, said Sun Tzu, or even their knowledge. End quote. A 1997 article from the Esoteric Gnosis magazine tells how an influential Italian Freemason, Arturo Reghini, 1878-1946, wrote in 1906, criticizing the Masonic leaders Giuseppe Mazzini and Albert Pike, for failing to create, quote, a secret right above all others, a sort of masonry within masonry, which would have unified the divided Masonic family, end quote. Two years later, in 1908, a group even broke away from the main group, forming, quote, a new 
Masonic organization with its headquarters at Piazza del Gesù in Rome. End quote. Eventually, it became the second branch of Italian masonry known as Piazza del Gesù. That's because of the location of their headquarters. In 1921, Regini joined the Supreme Council of 33 of the AASR, Ancient Accepted Scottish Rite, in Piazza del Gesù at number 47. What's so interesting about that? It just happens to be across the street in the same plaza as the Chiesa del Gesù, the Church of the Gesù, which also happens to be the world headquarters of the Jesuit order. Now, ancient and accepted Scottish Rite, or AASR, when written in Italian, would be the reverse. Rito Scozzese Antico et Accettato, or RSAA. Well, guess what I found across the street from the Chiesa del Gesù, the Church of the Gesù. See the RSAA and see the double-headed eagle? That is a symbol for the 33rd degree that the RSAA uses as its symbol. And see above it? If you look carefully, it's faint, but you can see the 47. In fact, the RSAA online says it's still at 47 Chiesa del Gesù. How close are these two groups? I think the Jesuits were keeping close tabs on everything they did. What could have motivated Regini, with all places in Italy, to place it in front of the Jesuits? If nothing else, the Jesuits certainly could keep an eye on a group like the Masonic Supreme Council of 33. Of course, Jesuits don't just keep tabs on what's happening across the street. They keep tabs on what's happening across the world.